What up, Internet? I'm Chaz. I'm Dan. Uh, welcome to Wine and Series Business. This is episode 104. Bo's back. I know it's short order, but he was tied into some cool stuff tonight. So uh, so we decided to do another show. Why don't you let us know what we're, what we're tasting? Well, we're doing Gruner Veltliners tonight. Uh, I was lucky enough to participate in a wine chat on Twitter tasting, and that's the hashtag wine chat. And every week is a theme tasting. This week was Austrian wine, and Gruner Veltliner being kind of the quintessential Austrian grape uh, was featured. I was sent some samples, and uh, Dan and Jazz we wanted to taste. Them. Yeah, well, they, they wanted to taste some, some wines, here, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a lot of bottles of different wines to try, different Gruners to try, and they both like these style of wines. So we figured let's yeah. try them and see how they go. So Austria makes some great wine. They do. Yeah, you all are a big lover of German wine. Austria's right next door, and and they've got a lot of character, a lot of similar styles that I really appreciate. So, uh, what what did we want to drink first? You had an order in mind, I think. Uh, I, I had an order in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, we sampled through. There was about, what, ten bottles? I have eight. Uh, we got eight, eight bottles. Yeah. Okay, eight bottles. Yeah. Um, and we sort of picked out some ones that we just, right off the top, thought were pretty good. The first one is the Leth Gruner Veltliner from oh, Steina Grund. Stein Grund? Stein Grund? Stein Grund? Stein Grund. Yeah, Stein Grund. Stein Grund. Yeah. There you go. Why don't you pronounce this okay. stuff? You just came back from Germany. Yeah. So, Dan would um, know. 2010. Yeah, 2010 Gruner Veltliner. So. So this one um, is coming in uh, around sixteen dollars a bottle. All right. Um, so it really reasonably priced wine. Big bottle. Big bottle. It does have a big bottle. Um, I can't really pronounce. I don't know how to say uh, a Wagram or uh, yeah, Wagram. Wagram. That's okay. another uh, region. And this one is, I think, from the Österreich part of Austria, which is a big wine region there. And just as, uh, as a factoid. Uh, Gruner Veltliner is the most produced or most grown grape in Austria. It's kind of their, their thing, as it were. And it's so. the Qualitates vine, which is probably their entry level in the United States, too. So, and the price point reflects that. And this is a uh, pulled price sheet on it, $16 a yeah. bottle yeah. For, the, for this wine. Getting like some green green rhubarb in there. Uh, a little bit of like, a little bit like white peach too, yeah, not, but not syrup. The, the, the peachiness is the fresh peachiness is what jumped out of this wine yeah. for me. Like when we were really first fresh. talking about yep. it, it's, it's like really, really nice, really fresh peach. And you're totally hitting it with fresh, right? Like you just you just got it from the yep. store, you just got it off the tree. It's not the one that's been sitting there for a couple weeks that like you've let sit on the counter for a while and it's yum, really, yum, you got to eat it in the shower. You know, like this is this is yeah, fresh, young. Peach in the shower. Yeah, peach in the right. shower. Peach you heard it here first. Yeah. Try it. And it's not for me. Somebody else talked about it. But they're just like, yeah, they've been sitting on the counter for two weeks. It's just like, you got to go to the shower to eat those peaches. And like, See, I get a, a little tickle of like a white pepper as well. Just a really faint hint of it. But for me, it is there. And I was told on the wine chat on Twitter tonight that that is typical of Green and Relly. So one of the hallmarks is a white pepper. And then, of course, the guys picked up on it, the peach, right away. Mm -hmm. uh, that, too, is, is really considered a typical flavor of Green and Relly. So... This, I mean, it smells varietally honest, and this is 100%. They don't. There's nothing else blended into it. So a bit of stainless jumps out of me, like a bit yeah. of like minerality, but it's almost like a metallic minerality, but not uh, not bad. But it's just it's just it's there, right? Yeah. So. I think my notes said something to the effect of like a like a wet gravel y kind of yeah. thing, but I, I totally see. It. And they, these I think are all uh, steel tank. There's no oak at all in any of these wines. It makes sense. Yeah, and I'm getting getting a little bit of that minerality there too, and this is definitely. Right, pretty straightforward wine. You're getting a little bit of that spice. You're getting some round fruit flavors um, that, again, are you know, pretty straightforward but pleasant. Like, there's some good balance here. It's easy drinking, and right at the sub $20 price point, at the Qualitates Vine quality level, I think that's pretty much what they're shooting for. It's and delicious. I think it delivers. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. Really nice. Oranges, peaches. Um, a little lime zest for me. Yeah, a little bit of yeah, citrus so element. That the zip on the finish. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the, the, the zippiness that. 12.5% yeah. alcohol. So, mm -hmm. fantastically food friendly, and I can just test, this is, uh, all Gruner Bellingers are designed to be had with food, and, and really, you're, I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't have it with food. Asian cuisine, Thai, Japanese, Chinese cuisines, anything sweet and spicy, anything sweet and sour, as a sommelier, this is what I would really like to reach for. So. One thing I've seen about these wines when we taste through the whole lineup, the majority of the wines have a, a significant amount of weight without being like extracted or heavy, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a it's a round feel on the palate when you're drinking it, right? It's like it's it's a, it's nice, it sits there nicely. It's not thin, it's not hollow, it's like it's it's like a presence with substance. Right. Yeah. It makes itself known, but it's not heavy, it's not cloying, right. it's nothing up. Exactly. Yeah. 
A little bit of RS, but nothing. nothing and else. I think this was a wad, uh, 2.1 grams yeah, per liter or so. Okay, so, okay, so yeah, so it is yeah. low RS, but there is a still a, a little perceptible. I think maybe that lends itself to the fatness that we are getting on that kind of mid palate. I think it's delicious. And that's unusual really like in the lineup. Did you see many with RS? So really actually, they all for? had RS. Okay. All eight bottles that we tried earlier, and then these three, they all have varying degrees of RS. Uh, starting low, 2.1 percent, up to I think Chaz and I saw was. A, 6.1 grams know, you per know, liter. You saw the sheets. So right. Those are some of the tech that I saw. Uh, I'm pretty sure that some of the, the Austrian wine experts out there uh, are going to be watching this. I'm really curious. I've heard that they all that they had to be dry. Apparently, that's kind of out the window. Maybe, does that just apply to Rieslings, or is that just like the the uh, levels above Qualitates wine? I'm curious. Yeah, when does question, the restriction question. on 100% dry wine kick in for Austrian wine? Uh, more jibber jabber. Let's move. Let's move right, on. Yeah, to, move on. Well, what do you What do you think of it? Wine, oh yeah. Um, score the wine. Score the wine. Blah, blah, blah. 80, 86 points. Uh, and uh, don't take that negatively because, like I said, it's very straightforward. There's not a whole lot of complexity that's going to knock your socks off here. But there's some very solid flavors. Everything's in balance. It's enjoyable. I think at the price point, it delivers. Yeah. Very well done. Uh, but Dan nailed it, right? It's a very straightforward wine, good easy drinker, and under twenty dollars, an absolute buy. Eighty-seven points for me. I'm I'm a B, um, eighty-six about. Yeah. Again, echoing what these guys it's said. Delicious. Great yeah. buy. Under twenty bucks for me. The on my rating scale, a B is a uh, very good wine. So I, I don't do pairings a lot, but I, I would go with arugula salad with radishes for this. Mm. Like I would really like to. I will say with this paired well with from earlier, have you tried it? You take a thick cut bacon slab. And saute some shrimp in white wine, and then hoisin sauce. Nice. Wow. Yes. <laughs> With this, right. the acid cuts through the richness, cuts through the shrimp and the bacon, cleanses your palate, gets you ready for that salty, sweet, sour, hoisin, everything. It's it's a marvelous pairing. So That's a good combination of flavors, yeah. And it really worked out great tonight. So, so what's the next one we have here? Uh, you're holding the bottle. So I know I know it's the fridge, and, yeah. and this is not the first time that uh, wine from them appear on the show. So I was actually excited to try this again. 2010, again. And this is the uh, Steinberg, Steinberg Vineyard. Uh, Gruner Veltliner again. Um, I don't see any other classification on it, so I'm going to assume that it's quality taste wine as well. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is $16 a bottle. All right. And uh, as a contrast, even before I taste it, I might give it away, but this actually goes up a smidge in the RS. 2.3 grams per liter okay. residual sugar. So again, 2010. Um, this is uh, one that I got in tasting tonight, and uh, a lot of people really enjoyed. That was a really pleasant, easy drinking, 16 dollar bottle. That's East Coast. You probably will find it about that on the West Coast as well. There's some good discounting going on uh, here in the Northwest for it. So, and it is. Uh, if you are curious, if you're a wine geek, uh, Frederick Wildman Sons. Import okay. this, wow. uh, so yeah. yeah, they and it is uh, Monica Keha selection. Okay. Kaha Keha, I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, really good, good importer of really high quality wines. So shout out to her for that. This is stepping away from the peaches. Mm -hmm. This is like more in the range of like mm -hmm. apples mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. the minerality, but like apples without the sweetness. We're talking like green apples to me, like almost like Granny Smith tartness. It's true, like, like yeah. maybe you're lining up to cook pork chops, right? You got like oh. the spicy seasoning rub, and you got some apples you're lining up. Like it's all the components that you use. So I guess that kind of leads into a food pairing pretty, pretty easily there. Yeah, and it is like a over. really nice transition uh, from the first one into this, and really get a sense of the versatility of Gruner. Reminds me like white frosting, though. There's something there. It's like just a, like a sweet, like a richness, white something. I don't know. You can almost get that, like out of the tub. Out of the tub? Frosting out of the tub. <laughs> not the bad tub. Frosting out of the tub. Frosting out of the tub. Not frosting out of the tub. No, out of the tub at the store. No, that's not what I mean. There's a website for that, isn't there? <laughs> Let's not go there. Let's not go there. All right. All right. See, I'm still getting a little of that tickle of the pepper, uh, which helps. I'm getting a little sweetness, though. Just a little bit comes through the nose. Much more subdued wine on the palate. Yeah. A little gentle. I kind of like that texture. Minerality sits again. 
an interesting thing I've noticed with Austrian wine, you can feel the alcohol, but it's not necessarily expressing itself as heat as I get in a lot of wines. It's kind of like the weight that they're talking about it kind of sits more in the center of the palate instead of giving that fire kind of around the edges. Yeah. That bothers me. It's just kind of got, again, it's got kind of like a heavier feel to the center that kind of dries things out, works with the acidity, uh, which while it's present, there's not a whole ton of acidity on this, which is an interesting it's, observation. It seems to me a little like uh, it encompasses more of your palate in the richness, the, the mouth feel kind of expresses itself across more of my palate um, than the first wine. And I like that. It's a little more, I think that lends itself to complexity. And it's, again, this is low alcohol wine. I think it's uh, 12%, 12.5% actually on this one. So low alcohol, but like Dan said, it, the alcohol lends weight. It lends structure a little bit in a way. I'm going to go with pears. Again, not super ripe, but just light, just, just, just freshly ripe. Pears is the fruit that oh. strikes it for me. Yeah, I, I, I'm totally agreeing with you, pears. I don't know that my palate totally agrees with this one, man. Well, go so, for it. What do you get? Yeah. No, it's just, it's just, it's just uh, you know, like green apples, but uh, mm -hmm. the acidity is separate from the wine, and then like you get the minerality, but it's just I don't know. It's not together. It's like, mm -hmm. especially coming from from the first wine where it was balanced and like all a complete package. Like this is just I don't know. I just it's kind of a good point on palate I don't find that I don't yeah. find that interesting. And so I don't Chaz, find it at all. Chaz picked this wine for the show, and I picked and I picked this one. Yep. So yeah, we were both a little uh, difference yeah. of opinion coming out there. But. This is almost Riesling like, huh? With its fruit characteristics, whereas like this is okay. peachy and, and mm -hmm. heavy. Where I consider a Gruner like this is almost like. Do you mean ripeness of the fruit? No, I'm talking, I'm talking fruit fruit profile like. Okay. Green apples, minerality. Think of as I have more sips, a little bit of that green apple acidity is kind of setting in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just sits on the sides of the tongue, right? Like, I don't know. It, it, it seems. Uh, where, where does that land for you then? Where does that drop in from? Uh, 84, 85 points. It's, right. it's just, it, it's delicious, but it's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. just, it's okay. 80, 84 points. 84 points. All right. So that this is I like just a notch better. Uh, myself, 87 for me, and while the pear flavors don't usually win me over a whole lot, I like the texture on the palate. Um, it kind of has an, ex an expansive feel to it, I don't mean this in like a large and lofty, so like there are some wines that just kind of like blow up and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't, I, you know, I don't know, it's not like that, but it's it's full, and and it, it's it got some sophistication to it, and I like that, so 87 points. Um, I'm actually kind of going with Dan on this one, I think for me, uh, the expansiveness across my palate was really nice, I think the... For my palate, at least, the acidity was nicely integrated. I'm going to go B+, plus, uh, 87 plus 88 points. Uh, I liked it. I liked the mouthfeel. I liked the, the clean, for me, clean and pure acid. It's big. Low alcohol again. Uh, yeah, I mean, B+, plus on this. It's a very good wine. I And again, food-friendly for me. I, and I keep harping on that because these are food-friendly wines. They need to be had with food. We're doing this as a technical exercise of tasting what we taste with food. These wines shine, and they just, they are so fun to drink. And what do you think? Similar food profile for this, or, or different? What, 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 where would you go with that? Um, I actually would go similar on this one, except okay. I would substitute out, if you're going to do bacon, look for something uncured, I would actually go with something like a thinly sliced, like a shabu shabu style pork or beef, because that's going to have a little less of that richness from the hoisin sauce. You might do... Uh, like a, a, a black bean and like a, 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 as an Asian food store, black bean and garlic sauce, uh, sweet and sour pepper sauce with this, I think would really shine. Again, you're going to get contrasting flavors, richness, fruit, and acid in this will kind of cut through the pepper, cut through the richness of the beans and the beef or pork. So Cool. All right. Uh, wine number three. Oh, Chess already has his rinse down. Yeah. The rinse uh, is, I already this rinsed. Is our I already rinse. rinsey rinsed. We're done here. So, we can uh, say that more often now that Vayner Truck's retired. We yeah. don't need to worry about uh, someone else pronounced this. Uh, so. what, what's the what's the producer it's, it's, name? I uh, can't read that. Four Strider. It's okay. Four Strider. There you go. Yeah. Four Strider. Four Strider. Four Strider. Uh, Schiefer. So and and that, that means slate. That's one of the few words that I, I do know in German. And they say on the bottle that it's a single vineyard. And this is a step up in price point. It's yes. Still doesn't have any of the. Uh, I don't, I don't know what they call them in Germany, the, the product out levels in Austria. There's something else. Again, Austrian expert. Creme style duck reserve, though. It's a, yeah, it's a DAC reserve. Oh, maybe that. Uh, DAC. I'm gonna so this, this does actually retail for a bit more, like Dan said. Uh, $24 anyway. a bottle. 
suggested. You will find this again, you know, take suggested retail, take 10, 20% off of it. You'll find store shelf retail, um, 20 bucks a bottle, usually. Uh, We're starting to smoke. Yeah, it smells good. This is actually uh, pushing the alcohol up again, 13.5%. This is what I would think of as a little bit higher alcohol greener. So they probably um, riper grapes then too, right? That's, that's um, the, yeah, and it, I mean, well, 2010 was a really difficult year. Uh, oh, from what I understand in Austria. Oh, this is great info. And this, so, this is great to have. And this, well, this came out of the chat tonight, so this is the only reason. Still, I'm doing that's this. great. Yeah. But uh, a, a very difficult year, uh, lower yields, so tougher to produce really good wine, but not impossible. And I think they did produce really good wine. Um, so this is far, again so Monica Keha selection. So she imported this. It's one of the ones I was, you know, sampled on for some strange reason. They sent me these wines, and I think this one is uh, pretty, pretty good. This this might have been my favorite of the whole tasting of all the eight greeners that we tasted tonight. So, and here you are getting. Oh, go ahead. Well, this is almost like a combination between the first two. Like oh, you get nice. this, you get yeah. the peachy notes, but it's you get like a good, the first two, a good, a good elements. amount of like white pear and minerality. Like it's it's like yeah. there's a, there's a there's multiple like I'm still picking up that different lime, levels of that fruit. shaved lime that I really love in, and I love that oh, in yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that in Gruner Veltliner. I love when I find that in the real quirky Rieslings too. Oh man, and if those, you hadn't said that, it's it striking me now. Like I never would have guessed this otherwise. Kind of getting like that again, like similar similar to what he was saying. I'm getting a little bit of elements of both, right? Some of the rhubarb, some of the pepper. Uh, I'm getting like some green bell pepper, like you get out of a saw blanc. There's just a touch of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like there if, you, if you could lie to me and tell me that, hey, try this areas. saw blanc. I don't think I'd call you out. Oh, that's a good call. There. Yeah. Uh, but the, but the point is, like, there's some really good depth here. It's complex. Yeah. There's some interesting things going on in the nose. And one, and one thing to bear in mind too is uh, 2010 difficult vintage uh, green bell pepper can also be under ripe fruit picked. Um, and you can have anthocyanins, which can be just compounds that come out and. Underripe, but I think a lot of wines it helps. White wines especially. I was gonna say like it makes the wine more interesting. Red wines you smell that in a Cabernet Franc and you're throwing it away and it's like wow this this really is not good. Underripe Cabernet Sauvignon too from California it happens. Underripe white wines it's a totally different thing and that's what's fascinating about the differences in grapes. It, 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 it's, it's a good thing. It's interesting. It, it it's a dimension that our palates pick up on. Our olfactory senses will hit on that and really. And it can work. Yeah. There's even some of the pepper notes coming through on the palate. The peaches show a, just slightly, like uh, not not near as much as the nose. Man. But the oh, limes show. I big get that time. pepper, that crushed white pepper on the back of the on the finish, really nicely though. Really delicious fruit flavors here. Yeah. Yeah. Good depth. Yeah. Good integration again, right? Yeah, now. yeah. Yes. Not only is the complexity there, you really get to experience it in a way. If you get kind of like some of this rich fruit, you get the spices with the acidity coming in right in behind it, and not. It's almost no... like there's, a, there's a hint of like a, an orange, like a navel orange thing that I'm yeah, getting out absolutely. of it too. Um, again, orange peach, um, and like a minerality. Mm -hmm. Everything goes in that wave, like you said, but it's a wave that is carries so, consistently yeah. through. A touch of V8 juice too. Just saying, just a touch yeah. of tomato juice. So. It, it, interesting. It's, it's very interesting. Like, interesting. Like, oh, I like so that, that. That's like it. my girlfriend laughing at us in the background <laughs> for our V8 juice, a Chaz's V8 juice no. comparison. But it's I like, okay. I like V8 juice. Anyway. Bring bring the palate to the table. I, across the board, we talk about acidity a lot. None of these are none of these are ripping. Um, there's like full acidity, like it's it's playing its part here, but none of these I I Describes like strongly no. acidic wines. No. Not ripping is not. Yeah, which is something that both of us kind of lean towards in our whites, but there's still good balance here. The structure's intact, and it kind of keeps everything together. And really supports that evolution yeah. of flavor. Yeah. Anyway. This is this is I think excellent. This is probably the best one that we have. So yeah, this this is showing very well. Complex, very balanced, absolutely delicious. Ninety points for me. Wow. I like wow. it. It's, it's really good. Like, no, really it's, wrong. Right? It's, it's fantastic. No, that makes me beyond happy. It was. It's really good. There was a person who sent me these wines. The weight of it is fantastic. The that acidity was, is yeah. killer. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's yeah. Eighty nine plus for me, right on the edge. Not quite there, but uh, I'd say at the price point, 
kills it. If you see this on the shelf, yeah. if you're curious to try something bucks, new, a bottle. hit it. Yeah, at, at 20 bucks, this is a fantastic deal and something yeah. unique, right? I'm a big Riesling guy. I love Riesling. If you drink that all the time, if you drink Sauv Blanc all the time, if you drink Pinot Gris all the time, yes. throw all your Pinot Gris away, give it to a friend, drink some of this instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, a minus, 90 points for me. I'm actually leaning with Chaz on this. Uh, again, just really, really, together. really well done wine. It's yeah. integrated. It's fantastic. So this is a kind of wine, $20. If I bought this for 20 bucks on a wine shop, I would be extremely happy. That's one thing I, I read on an internet forum one time is that if they go to a, uh, a restaurant and you don't know any of the wines on the list, look for the Austrian wine. And generally, yeah. you're going to pick up something that's decent quality. Yeah, red or white. And, yeah, and red we're or white. tasting yeah. whites, but and generally, Austrian the, reds like Zwiegel, Saint Laurent are two more Austrian reds. You do those on a wine list, you will be happy, especially yeah. if you're having food. Austrian's got some to prove right now. They do. They have a little they're bit they're of an attitude they're about they're it. They're throwing it up like 20, yeah. 20 bucks for this, like killer. And I know the, awesome. the suggested retail is twenty four. You'll find it for less. It is a promise. You will find it for less. All these all of these wines. You'll find them for less. Smoking deals. These are going to be you know twelve to fourteen bucks a bottle. They're great wines for that price. Yeah, solid stuff. So, yeah. uh, uh, got a question? A uh, question of the day: if, if you have had an Austrian wine, have you liked it? Have you not liked it? Why? If you haven't had an Austrian wine, would you be tempted to get it on a wine list by the glass or by a bottle at a restaurant? What do you think? Sweet. Are you even aware of Austrian wines? And, and if not, what's what you your think? favorite Austrian wine? If you are aware. Wow. Ooh, I know mine. What's yours? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know the vineyard offhand. FX Pickler blew my mind with with a. Uh, I man, I you know I had to look. I'm gonna have to look it up, but I promise I'll post it in the comments. Crocker. Blew my mind. It, 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 TBA Crocker for me. I'll link to the notes. Yeah. I'm not even going to Was epic. There, but it's good stuff. I, I know my la I know labels. I don't know the producer. I can't even... Comments. Yep. Yeah. Viewers. Bring it comments. on. Bring it on. Let's talk about this a bit. This Thanks is for passion watching. for us. See you next time. Cheers.